Okay, what's up everybody? So, uh, just finishing my day teaching here. It's uh, almost nine o'clock here. I literally just finished. <laughs> um, but uh, before I uh, finish for the day, I wanted to um, do a quick little um, just showcase and review of um, a new pedal that I picked up. So, um, first and foremost, um, I am absolutely in love with my DW9000, okay? DW9000, fantastic pedal, fantastic pedal. And not that I have actually very many, if any, gripes with it whatsoever, but as I compare both here, and uh, excuse me, I'm just going to be sitting on the floor here while I do this. Um, but with the DW9000, okay, just to give you the overview, uh, some people have these, some people don't. I absolutely love this pedal because what they do is they combine the um, accelerator and concentric, um, you know, the ellipse or the concentric um, with how the chain wraps around um, into one pedal. Where with the DW5000s, you have to purchase either one of those models, right? So um, what it does basically is it will change the um, adjustable angle to make it more concentric or to make it more rounded just by turning the key here, okay? So what that does is we'll either put the chain in more of an ellipse like that or as more of a concentric circle, okay? So um, depending on if you're going for more of like a power stroke uh, with every stroke you're doing or more just uh, like a quick feathering or 16ths or uh, ease of playing but with a little less velocity. Um, absolutely love this pedal, okay? It's a great pedal, not knocking it by any means. But um, one thing, to adjust the spring tension, it's got the old school, you know, got to unlock it, pull down tension on the spring, uh, lock it back down, and you have to take it off the drum most of the time to do that, unless you're kind of savvy and bending over and trying to get it quick. Um, then you can do it that way as well. Um, but everything else on here is adjustable, you know, uh, while you can still get to it while it's um, mounted onto the bass drum. It has uh, what are, these are called the toe clamp, uh, toe clamp here. So they have rubber grommets on them that also angle. So it's not going to, you know, scratch up your bass drum hoop as you're using it. With also a slip pad on the bottom. Okay. So my biggest gripe with it, and it's just it's chain driven, um, is that you'll get slack in the chain or whip back. Right. So and we don't take our feet off the pedals. If you've been playing for a while, you know you know you're always supposed to keep your feet on the pedal no matter what. But I do have, you know, where some of that slack and slap back will happen, or it'll take longer for the ellipse to bring the beater around for the power stroke, right? So um, at, while this is my workhorse pedal, what I have noticed is that um, because of the way it's designed and with some of that stuff, um, I'll start to notice um, squeaking in it. So, um, you know, if you think back to like Bonham's, uh, you know, most famous records and drum recordings, playing with Zep and, uh, you know, all that, how you can hear his bass drum pedal squeaking pretty much in, in all of his, but I mean, what boy was he known for his foot, right? So it's like, well, you know, who really cares if that's kind of like, if he's just got so much power going and, uh, you know, it's buried underneath all the mix of the rest of the song, right? But if you're recording just drum parts and you don't know how it's going to be mixed, and you've got a slight squeak in there, it's going to come through in the recording, right? Um, and uh, well, while it's easy to eliminate, you know, but I just still have to oil it and, you know, take it apart and lubricate it and make sure. Um, and, and this pedal's not very old. And I started having that problem with it pretty soon after I got it, which I was kind of like, why? why? Why is this squeaking right away? You know, it should at least take a while and kind of get dirty before that happens, right? Um, so what I went ahead and did, and I think you already could see a picture or a shot of it, 
is I got myself a machined. So these pedals are made out of one solid cast piece of aircraft aluminum, okay? So obviously your footboard is bolted on the heel plate. The heel plate is contoured too, which is kind of cool. Um, but the entire rest, the posts, everything is all machined from one solid piece of metal. Okay. In addition to direct drive. So I got a direct drive model and absolutely love it. Um, I literally just got it a little bit earlier today and I've just been using it with my students and kind of experimenting with it a little bit. But what's so great about direct drive is that every little movement, just like, you know, I'm barely pushing on here, uh, translates straight into the beater, straight into the beater. Okay. Now, first and foremost, what I'll show you with the beater and I don't have any of the other um, faces or the weights in this right now, but I'll explain it to you as I show you. So here, um, these come with three different types of um, strike, the striking head the beater, but it's still the same beater. It's just got um, a different uh, surface in the front. So all you have to do, unscrew it, put another one on, and it comes with three. So this is the um, hard felt. Then it comes with a soft felt, which is um, like the consistency of symbol felt, of symbol guide felt. So it really is like that, like gray and a little bit softer felt for a softer sound. Um, and um, then in addition to a rubber side, so kind of like a, a traditional ninth uh, or DW beater, you know, where this has the um, harder felt and then the rubber or plastic side whatever it's rubber hidden poly it's a poly resin but um it comes with all three of those all with this one beater okay and these are very similar to uh speed cobra beaters so i can uh, show you here you see how it has those four holes in it well it actually comes with four weights that kind of look like uh gun casing shells and you can stick however many of those weights you want into those four slots. And you can determine what the weight of your own beater is all from one beater, depending on how many weights you add or take away to this, to this one beater. Okay? So we all know that these uh, traditional D-dub beaters, they're pretty heavy. They got, they've got a lot of pendulum weight and swing to them. But which is great for creating a lot of power if you'd like to do if, if you're playing uh, um, you know with a lot of power with it. But you can put the weights in this and then screw on whatever beater or whatever um, striking face you'd like to the beater. Um, in addition to change the angle of whether it's sitting flush, a little bit further down, right on. Um, in addition to turning it some, for those that might play with double bass drum pedals where they have to have their pedals not straight onto the drum but a little bit angled for their feet, you know, to fit on the right way. So, I mean, there's just so many options just within the one beater of weight distribution, striking surface, um, you know, tension, um, length of the beater, um, you know, the, all those different things. And... Um, what's so great is that it'll receive any beater too. So if I wanted to switch the beater from the 9000 onto this, can easily be done. If I wanted to put my Speed Cobra on there, could easily be done. Okay. So that's one really really cool thing that I like about this. Um, really like about it. Next, spring tension. Spring tension. You know, you don't have to reach inside here and unlock and crank down and lock again or any of that it's all on the side it's all on the side so literally all you do is this drum key or this uh, lock right here you just take your key your T key and if you go clockwise you'll see that the line starts to move down increasing the tension of the spring 
So just the further you move down, the further you move down, it increases the spring tension without ever having to take it off the drum. Pretty cool. So, you know, you can get it down there, and then this is at maximum right now. But I'm just going to show you, watch how long this swings. And that's at tightest, that's at the absolute tightest tension. It's like a perpetual motion machine almost, right? So that's one thing I really like, and it has all of these gauges here, so you can get your exact um, tension that you like and just lock it there and have that done. And while it's still affixed to the bass drum, then, you know, you don't have to take it off to, to do any of that. You just literally turn the front, and you can adjust it from there. Or just unscrew this, put a weight or two in, and screw on a different um, striking surface, and that's it. So um, those are two of my first and most favorite parts. Then you have a floating cam system in this. So... Uh, the, instead of having uh, friction, uh, like a, um, ball bearing friction with it, and while they do still have a, you know, a bearing in there, um, but they're magnetic and free floating. So there's like no friction loss within the movement of the pedal. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and then with the cam adjustment, so that's what these lines are for, you know, to change the beater height and all that. Um, is that that's just done um, the way that actually it's done on a 9000 still. So I'll try to show you here, but that screw right there, this lug right here. So that's still your cam adjustment, just like the other one. So you can see here how it would rotate up into this slot, up or down, depending on where you want it to sit. Okay. Um, then one of my the final and most favorite parts of it, is that the footboard angle is not contingent upon um, the movement of the rest of the pedal at all. So we all know, like, playing Tetris with our gear, right, trying to get it like, well, I want the angle at this height, but then when I do that, it moves the beater back to this position, which I don't like. And how, you know, how can I offset, the, you know, th that kind of stuff? Well, with this, you can change the angle of the plate just based upon loosening this part from um, the direct drive, okay? And that's only one, one um, point of contact that does that. So depending on, you know, how loose you have it sit, but you can see here, so that's all the way lowest, and then you can change the footboard angle just by doing that. And what? It doesn't, it doesn't affect the um, beater height at all. I know, I'm just because I'm pulling down on it, but... Um, it doesn't affect the actual beater position at all, only the footboard position, okay? And that's only one adjustment. Then, in addition to that, you have this adjustment up here to shorten or lengthen the amount of the direct drive you have going from where the uh, uh, foot plate meets the drive and then up to the top, Okay. So that one is also just a turnkey. The whole thing is all just done with keys. So there's not cranking and twisting and um, locking and unscrewing and pulling down on a spring while trying to lock it and not lose the tension and all that. Um, it's all just done through um, the T key that, you know, the T, they call these T keys, but the T key that comes with, not, the t not like a tiki, tiki torch, but the T T key um, is what allows you to do that. So I unlocked both for right now, just so you can see that not only will it change just how high your um, foot uh, plate sits and the angle of your footboard, but then in addition to that, you can move up or down this part of it too. So see how that shortens the length of the direct drive. So regardless of what this sets at, is to say that I had it just set at um, you know the highest angle possible. So I'm gonna just keep my finger there so it doesn't slip. But then watch as I do that, it's still it's only shortening the distance for how far of travel you have from the drive to the beater. 
So you have the angle adjustment for your footboard in addition to um, the drive adjustment for how much uh, travel room that you have. And that's basically like the direct drives version of a concentric versus um, eccentric, or, or um, I guess they call it uh, turbo and turbo and velocity, uh, or tur turbo, turbo and nitro, I forget, I, I, I can't remember. But one is meant for the power of the stroke and then one is more meant for more quicker notes with the beater, like that, okay? Um, and that's what I meant by this concentric versus eccentrics here. So if you just imagine that this is a direct drive, then if you shorten that, or you make it to where it's not concentric or it's ex eccentric, then that's kind of the same idea with the direct drive, okay? So, um, not gonna lie to you guys, this pedal is extremely expensive. D basically what DW did is they went to all the best companies, they took all the best feature features from all the best companies, combined them into one pedal, and then sli slapped a ridiculous price tag on it because they're DW. Um, and I was so lucky, and I do this with everything that I buy, but I wait, I'm patient, um, and then I just make sure that if I find something available, if I can at all get, um, you know, like a floor model or a used model that, um, d you know, it doesn't even have a single scuff mark on it or anything or any pitting or any wear or any dirt or anything on it, I will 100% buy that, especially if it's machined aircraft aluminum, <laughs> you know? It's like you'd have to drop this thing out of an aircraft for it to break. So um, so basically my point being, list price for these, I think they're $570 for one pedal. Considering that the cream of the crop, $9,000, $350 to $400, you can get them for brand new. But this pedal... I'd say this pedal weighs probably about three to five pounds heavier than the aluminum does because this is aluminum and this is like uh, cast steel. So, um, you know, it kind of depends on everyone's preference, but um, I've played with the Axis pedal, a direct drive Axis at the Academy for quite a while now, and that's the only one that I have, and it's pretty old and funky and... Um, the action's a little goofy, and it squeaks and all that. But it's a direct drive, and, you know, I, I know what those feel like and what they play like. But um, this pedal, I was able to get for $300. So I got it for less, or, well, I guess half price, right about half price. And this is used, but look at it. There's not a single scuff. There's not anywhere on the slit. There's no, you know, play in it. The toe clamp. And what's cool about um, the new design on these two is it has a rocker plate in the, in the bottom. So you can actually pivot the grommets back and forth in addition to have the toe clamp on top. So these really help to save your bass drum hoops so it doesn't scratch it. Whereas, if you can see here, like, there's no, there's nothing underneath. So, these two grommets, while they will, you know, uh, rotate, and they have the same um, rubber on them, um, they, they don't move back and forth like the bottom plate of the machine. So, um, just wanted to show you guys this, what the design is like, the fact that you can get them for... the cheaper than what a DW9000 is if you shot for them the right way. And there are so many adjustments with this, and it is so sensitive that every little movement you put into this pedal goes straight into the beater. You know, and there's no play, and obviously this is unlocked right now, but there's no play at all, so you don't have to worry about uh, chain slack or, or whip or, you know, um, if the pedal bounces back up and then you have to wait for the chain to come back down and catch up 
or squeaking or oiling or the ch you know those different things. Plus, everything is super intuitive, and and you can um, access it all just from turning these keys. So you don't even have to touch the spring. You don't have to touch the cam. You don't have to touch any of it. It's all done just with drum keys and um, the, and the locks. So. Um, while I just got it today and I haven't gotten it all set up exactly as I like it or, you know, mess with the weights and, and, and different beaters and that kind of stuff yet, um, I can just, uh, I, I wanted to at least give a quick little review and just show people what it's like and how it differs from a 9000 um, because this pedal is amazing. Because I'm a firm believer and I, I play 16, like even straight 16th or triplets with one bass drum pedal so that that way I can keep the hat going at the same time. Because that's your timekeeper. I mean, like, if I'm in a live band situation, people are not watching my double bass drum pedals to, like, well, where's he playing 16th at? No, they're looking to see what, my, what the pulse is doing on my left foot and whether I'm playing two and four, quarter notes, or eighth notes, if anyone is kind of confused or where beat one is at or whatever, everyone, no matter what band I'm in, the first thing they look at is the hi-hat. Not, what's your second bass drum pedal doing? You know, that's, that's not how people lock into it. So, um, my whole philosophy is it's better to have the muscle memory and the independence to keep your hat going at the same time you're able to play six, straight 16th, uh, 16th note triplets, um, you know, whatever. Um, dotted eighth tied to two sixteenths, two sixteenths tied to an eighth, uh, dotted eighth tied to a sixteenth, you know, all those different syncopated patterns. And that takes a lot, you know, like toe ball or toe ball ball or da 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 da, da you know, that kind of stuff um, with, within your technique. Um, with these, you can literally just sit here and just feather the pedal, just feather it. Um, and last but not least, what I'll say is, I was watching uh, Matt Garska's video. Uh, you know, Matt Garska, the drummer for Animals as Leaders, plays with Tosa Nabasi. And he was playing two uh, separate bass drums. Um, and he had one of these pedals on each drum. He didn't have double bass drum pedals. He had a single on each bass drum. Okay, and if you go back and you watch that video, what you're going to realize is he's playing 32nd notes with two separate bass drum pedals because he's playing 16ths on one with feathering and 16ths on the other with feathering. What's 16 and 16, guys? 32nd notes. So, um... I was like, what in the heck pedal is that? Like, I had never seen it, that pedal. You know, I've seen tons of direct drives, but I didn't know if it was, you know, an Axis or a new model or, you know, there's, there are a lot of different um, models out there. But once I did some research on it and I found it, um, and I just saw, you know, and obviously I'm no Matt Garska, but just to see, because I do do that same exact technique in feathering, and I use one bass drum pedal for everything I do, I, I mean, I still have Speed Cobras, and I started playing double bass drum pedals. But for me, it, um, as, it, and it, as a working musician, it's way more important to be able to have the independence of still being able to play 16th notes with one bass drum pedal while keeping time for the rest of the band with the hi-hat. 